And so we have long been obsessed with AI, with creating something. This isn't a new concept, it's not a new idea. In fact, I really love this quote from Pamela McCorduck who says, AI began with an ancient wish to forge the gods. For thousands of years, we've wanted to create something that is stronger than us, faster than us, smarter than us. Something that could seemingly do things that we would never be able to do. But now, all of a sudden, we're starting to ask what happens if that wish comes true? What happens if we're finally able to create something like this? What happens if we're finally able to create these gods that roam about planet Earth with all of us? Is that something that we want? Right? As the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. Now today we see lots of different examples of AI, right? I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. Many of you are carrying this in your pocket. Right? Consider that many of you in this room are carrying AI in your pocket. Siri, Cortana, Alexa. Right? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are many of these all over the place. And many of us are carrying them with us all the time. So AI is already very much integrated into our lives and into how we work. But when we think about modern day times, AI had a little bit of a turbulent start. If we were to look back, uh, the concept, the idea of modern day AI actually was created in 1956 at a conference in Dartmouth. And this was the official creation of the term artificial intelligence, AI. And this was the first time anybody has ever heard that phrase. And after this term, this concept was created at the conference, we saw a lot of excitement in AI. We saw the first golden years from 1956 to 1974. And during the golden years, we saw a lot of investment, a lot of excitement. People were very much wanting to see AI happen. Organizations around the world were putting in money and the researchers were focusing on these things inside of their laboratories and at schools. Everyone was talking about AI. And unfortunately, shortly thereafter, we got into the first AI winter. And the first AI winter was collectively a lot of people realized that we're not making that much progress with AI. We seem to have run into a wall. It's becoming expensive. It's starting to take up a lot of time. Maybe this AI stuff isn't going to happen after all. And for a period of a couple years, the conversation around AI subsided a little bit. And it just became one of those things that's never going to happen, but it's kind of cool to think about. And then again, shortly thereafterwards, we saw another resurgence of AI. We saw the boom from 1980 to 1987. And this, we saw the rise of expert systems. And some of you may remember these expert systems. An expert system was built on this logic of if, then. If you give it some kind of an input and feed it some kind of information, then you will get some kind of a response. And when we created this concept, again, there was a lot of excitement around it. We thought, oh my goodness, this if-then stuff, these rise of expert systems, this truly must be the beginning of AI. This is what's going to fuel and drive the future of work. And again, we saw a lot of investment a lot of organizations putting time and money and resources, educational institutions studying it, the world's top minds trying to crack this idea of AI. And yet again, we ran into more roadblocks. It was expensive, it was time consuming, and the problem with some of these systems was that if you inputted some sort of a weird value, you would get some kind of gibberish out of the system. So this if-then expert system really only worked for standard data, standard information, stuff that was a little bit more predictable. And when we realized that, we thought, well, surely this cannot be AI. And again, we ran into the situation of funding disappeared, energy disappeared, and we thought it's never going to happen. And then finally, 
We saw a major breakthrough in AI, something that we thought would never, ever, ever happen. We saw a supercomputer named Deep Blue beat the world chess champion Gary Kasparov in a chess match. And people were shocked. People thought, there is no way this could ever, ever happen. And sure enough, it did. And shortly after, we saw the DARPA Grand Challenge. And the DARPA Grand Challenge was a challenge that said, we want an autonomous vehicle to drive through uncharted terrain by itself for at least 100 miles. And that challenge, too, was completed. It was overcome. And now, all of a sudden, there was a lot of excitement. There was a lot of attention being paid to this because we thought, well, we have an autonomous car that drove 100 miles. We saw the world chess champion beaten by a computer. All things we never thought would happen. Clearly, something is now changed, and we are moving in the right direction. Athena and I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more content like that, check out futureofworkpodcast.com. And do me a favor, please review the podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever your preferred channel is. Thank you very much.